Hello, guys. Um, so, funny thing just happened. I set this thing up, and for the last five minutes, I've been looking for my phone. But my phone was on this stand the whole time. So I kind of feel a little bit stupid. Um, happy, uh, happy Sunday, I think it is, Sunday. Um, so yesterday I asked you to, to break down uh, one of my favorite players, um, Sammy Mewis. Um, so we'll get into that. Um, and, but first, well actually, what should we do first? Should we, opinions on the DA closing? It's just a league. Like all those clubs, they're already in other leagues. So it's fine. Um, I feel very sorry for the people who are employed by US soccer who lost their jobs. That's, that's not cool. Um, but, you know, it's it's life, right? It's it's a complete it's a complete um, change. Should we bring on Mana? Let's see if I can add Mana. All right, let me see. Okay, let me try this. I don't know how to do it. Oh my gosh. Man, I'm trying to bring you in, but I don't know how to do it. What if I do that? If I click on it. Oh, there you go. Lex. <laughs> Hi, man. How are you? Good. How are you? So I should tell people who you are. Okay. So this isn't just Beast Mode Soccer Hawaii. This is Meliana Shim, who... It isn't that annoying. Like, I did not say Siri, and Siri's asking me for things. I said what Hawaii. Happened? Hawaii does not sound like Siri. So this is Mana Shim. Mana went to Santa Clara University in NorCal and then got drafted to the Thorns. And no, then... get drafted, Dean. Come on. Oh, man. Tell your story. So but anyway, anyway. So this is Mana. And Mana's going to share her story because her story is actually very, very interesting. Dave's ready to hear the story for the first time. We're friends, Dave. I know it's been a while, but... No, I want you to share your story so okay. you can um, motivate the youth. Okay. So, Dave's right up until Santa Clara. I was going to be done with soccer after Santa Clara. I played attacking mid and holding mid. And I didn't think I was... I made, like honorable mention in second team I was never a first teamer and when my college career was over I thought I was just gonna go to law school and give up soccer but I didn't really want to and my head coach Jerry Smith and Brandy Chastain convinced me to go for a tryout because I didn't get drafted did you did you enter the draft did I I entered yeah and I didn't get drafted it was the oh, first wow. the league and like nobody, all of the coaches were new. Nobody knew who I was because that's only honorable mention. Um, but they were convinced that I was good enough to play. So I was like, okay, I'm only going to play if I can make the top team in the league because that's kind of how I am. Like if I'm, yeah, so I, um, and I didn't have that much money. So I had to choose one place to go try out for. Yeah. And Portland was the most appealing. They had the best team. I knew they were going to have the best team, and it's Portland, and I wanted to go check it out. So I went. It was January. It was the spring of my senior my senior year, and I bought a ticket to Portland for the weekend, and I attended the tryouts. Um, Cindy Cindy Parlophone was the head coach. I 
try it out that weekend. I felt pretty good about it. It wasn't my best, but it was my first tryout in like whatever, 15 years, you know. Because Mona Shim don't try out. <laughs> we didn't really have tryouts back then. You just make the team. Yeah, and she called me the next week and was like, we want to bring you in for preseason. Um, I don't know how many contracts we have left. We're bringing the draft girls in for preseason. They're not getting contracts yet. So we'll see where you fit in. And I was like, okay, that's good enough for me. So I showed up and of course it's like all of the girls that I looked up to, saying Alex, Toby and Ali, like Rachel Bueller, I mean, the list goes on. Karina, like, her team was yeah. yeah, so I was playing with them, and I was like, my first week playing pro, I had more fun than I did my entire career. It was like, everyone was so good, and I was being pushed at another level. Um, and anything less than your best would bring you up. I feel like, like as, as Vanilla Ice once said, anything less than the best is a felony. That's true. What what youth team did you play for? Uh, Sorry, it's so windy here. What was your question? What youth team did you play for in Hawaii? I played for, we had like a one-off team, which was called Ho'okale Kupua. It's a mouthful. But we didn't have, there was no club. We had one team. And almost all of our, my teammates went to play D1. But we, and then we transitioned to Leahi. So we had like a core group and then our coach left. So we transitioned to Leahi and I finished there. But I played for a year in Arizona with Sereno. Is it still Sereno or have they like changed names? I think they changed. Yeah. But we had a staff team. So now you are at law school. Yeah, wait, but I didn't finish my soccer story. I'm sorry, carry on. It's okay. So I went to Portland. I got um, offered a contract in the first week of preseason. Which is a big so, deal. It was a big deal to me. Like, yeah. I wasn't expecting to make it. You know, I was just like a walk-on. And I remember walking into the office and Gavin was in me. And Gavin was like, he's a GM. How much money do you want to make? And I was like, whatever you think I'm worth. <laughs> I don't even know about ballpark, whatever. <laughs> it was like such a rookie. But like no negotiation, just like whatever. I don't care. I'm so happy up until this point. I had the best year of my life. Like as far as fun, like everything. Fun. It was difficult. I made so many new friends. Like it was so much fun. And I remember I wasn't getting any playing time. I was just having to be like on the side. And then we didn't have a forward. Okay, that's not true. We had Alex and Singh. And then that's pretty much it. And Canada wanted Singh to play in the midfield. So I was like a 10, right? I, I mean, that's my favorite position. And I th think I'm a true 10. But we had a 10. Or we had a, like a solid midfield. And they moved Singh into the midfield. So I was like last. I was like last off the bench but they moved sink into the midfield and they needed someone to play next to Alex okay I don't know if I told you this story no. so everyone got to try out playing next to Alex up top it's like let's just see what kind of utility player we can put next to her because like she's obviously the star sink is going to be a star so we just need like some supporting cast right I never played forward ever like pro college <laughs> no maybe when I was like 12 and so I was like, Cindy, I kind of want to try. This was in, like, kind of passing after a training. Yeah. And she was like, okay, um, I'll try you there next practice. So the next practice, I was like, no, I'm pretty chill. So it's like, no big deal. And then practice time came, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. So I turned to Alex. I'm like, Alex, I need help. She's like, okay, just, like, you're good. Just play. So that training, I just played. And I... After the training, Cindy texted me and was like, you're starting this weekend. I wasn't even traveling. What? I hadn't stepped onto the field. Dave, I had zero minutes, like no playing time professionally. And we were traveling. We were away at Washington at Spirit. It was my first game, and I started next to Alex up top. I was playing forward next to Alex Morgan in front of Singh. <laughs> <laughs> playing forward over Singh. She was playing a 
attacking mid. And that was my first college or pro game. Crazy. Well, well played, how did you do? I, well, I scored goals because I didn't score in that game, I don't think. But I was like third goal scorer on the team. But it's because every they had attracted all the attention. Yeah. So I just find myself in the box open. I'd be like, thanks, guys, for the easy goal. I was just scrappy. I, I worked hard. I I, I kind of feel well. like I kind of feel like you're downplaying how good you are a little bit. <laughs> you know, because when I you know when I first started watching you, what what I saw was a player who reads the book game really well. And do you know what I can actually remember exactly what it was? You received the ball on the left. And you spun out and you used the outside of your foot to texture a ball in, I can't remember who it was to, into their path. And I was like, ooh, player. <laughs> you know, like when you see little things and you're like, ooh, that's not normal. So, like, it's, it's an amazing story, but I don't think you should downplay how good you are. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, you're pretty good. You're kind. You know? And now you're going to be a lawyer doing Beast from Soccer Hawaii. That's right. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? I feel like it's, it's a dream come true. I'm either going to train you or I'm going to sue you. <laughs> it's one or the other. So don't mess with me. Mana, thank you for coming on. Thanks, David. Um, you're awesome. I appreciate you. Love you loads. I love I'll, you. <laughs> I'll text you in a little bit. Yeah, let's be in touch. Cheers, Mana. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, bye. <clears throat> so that was a nice surprise, right? So Mana was, if you don't know who Mana is, absolute beast of a player. Um, and, you know, like, I, I, it was great that she was on because, you know, we all hear these stories of <clears throat> of players, like, not being given a chance and everything. But then when you hear it from, from their mouth that, you know, not, not that, you know, amazing player is recognised by everyone and, gets on the team but someone who went in and basically took their chance right which is absolutely amazing um and then she got to play with with Alex up front um and I but I, I definitely don't want to downplay how good a player Mana was she's you know very very good technician so I'm going to bring someone on to do a what do you want to call it a uh, technical breakdown of Samantha Mewis. I'm trying to bring it up, but it's not working. Hang on a second. Give me a thumbs up if you did, Samantha. Oh, that's my other side of my house. Uh, fix that. Yeah, it's not letting me add anybody in. Okay. So give me the thumbs up if you did it. Good. And I'll just try and pick someone from there because it's not, it's not letting me add people in. So I'm going to have to manually do it. So, yeah, Tristan, you saw the peloton, huh? <laughs> Okay, Laura Pilgrim, you are coming in. Hello, Laura. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Where are you? In Sydney. In Australia? Yeah. How is it there? It's nice. How's the, um, how's the, the lockdown? Oh, yeah, it's going well. Yeah? I can still go out and everything. Oh, you can? That's good. Yeah, just in my groups of two. Uh, see, that's lucky. I, I could do that because I've only got one friend. That was a joke. Laura, give me your breakdown. Well, hey, what time is it there? 9.14. In the morning? Yeah. You are in the future. <laughs> it's 4.14pm 4, Sunday here. <laughs> You're in the future. Wow. Okay, give me um, the Samantha Muir's technical breakdown. Oh, so I watched the US v. Like, Australia game. Did that hurt you? 
Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, I'm sorry. So she like only played 45 minutes though. But like some of her strengths were she like got up in the box and put crosses in for like the attackers and everything. Yeah. And she like made runs into the box. And she also like was consistently like scanning and giving like options to the backs to play for her and like the wingers and all that. Yeah, that's what I like. Like, because I feel like Sam Mewis is like one of those players who's never gonna get the headlines, right? Yeah. So like a good comparison for Australia would be Lana Kennedy, right? Never gonna get the massive headlines, but they're like glue on the team. Right and and Sam especially like she 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 fixes a lot of errors and she's got the distribution that she very rarely puts a pass out of place right and that that just it just goes it doesn't get any plaudits but you need those players right who's your favourite player Chloe the Gardner yeah was it yeah. where was she last year she was at Spirit no or was it Portland or yeah something? Spirit Spirit. How, how, what do you like about Chloe? Oh, she's just like, she wants to win like every ball. And wants what to position, show everyone. What position do you play? Six. Uh, who's your favourite six in the world, men or women? Julia. Oh, you didn't say Busquets. Okay. <laughs> Why do you like Julia? I just like how she goes in for her tackles. I, mental, isn't it? Oh, I'd hate to play against her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, even like on like set pieces when she goes in for the header, I just wouldn't want to mark her. Because mm. you're like, that girl's just going to run through me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, 50 yeah. 54, I'm like, nah, you can have that. That's all you. Yeah. Laura, thank you so much for coming on. Um, it was no fantastic problem. hearing another accent. Um, no, no hate toward my American people. But I always love talking to Australians. You're awesome. Thank you so much for following along. You're Thank brilliant. You. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so two surprises today. Mana and Australia Nora, which is awesome. Um, so, guys, what I wanted to do, I've gone through the emails and everything, okay, about um, what you're struggling with. And we had a lot of emails. And the ones that struck most are confidence during games, okay? Now, what I want you to realize that, you know, if you're suffering with your confidence during games, you're not, you're not confident, you're not going in, you're not, you're not as, um, you're not full of beans as you should be. Number one, it's fixable, okay? Number two, it's not entirely your fault because we, you know, we do a lot of technique stuff and everything, but we don't, as coaches, focus so much on the mental aspect, right? So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is just talk you through how we work with players on the mental side of the game, okay? Now, first of all, it's a specialist subject. Right, I'm not an expert in the mental side of the game. Um, there's a person on Twitter called Dan Abrams who's brilliant at it, and that's all he does. So, if you're on Twitter, follow him. But what I'm going to do is share with you some of the things that we do with players. Now, you already know the training aspect. If you like, yeah, you like this shirt, this is going to be one of the, the prizes. Now, you already know the training aspect, and that breeds confidence in games, right. The more you practice, you can't help but stack up your confidence here, right? Now, there's always those players who will ball out in practice, right? They go real, they're really good in practice. Um, and when it comes to a, a game, they go missing, right? And again, that is, it's, not preparing right so i'm going to talk you through a couple of things here if you've got a pen write them down or watch the replay right so number one you've done your idp you've made your long-term goals you've made your short-term goals all of that right number one what we do with players 
is micro goals, right? We give players something to focus on in the game, right? So a micro goal is something for you to focus on. So it'll be, right, I want to connect all of my passes today. I want to connect my passes. I want to, I want to play a new type of pass today, okay? Giving you something to focus on. So the anxiety that's here and here doesn't come out. Well, it comes out, but it's, we, we change that anxiety into excitement to get on the field, okay? Now, from when I played, my biggest um, problem was me. Mentally, it was me, right? Now, as soon as I made a mistake, that was it. It was done. I would hide from the ball. Um, you know, if there, if there was a clear path to from the ball to me, I would hide behind a defender because I didn't want to mess up again, right? Now, I, I fixed it by doing a few things. The first one was the micro goals, right? I'd give myself something to um, focus on. The next thing would be the three second rule, where I'd allow myself to get mad for three seconds and I'd have to fix it straight away, which we talk a lot about the shape of your foot and the shape of your body. And usually you can fix any error by looking at the shape of whatever body part hit that ball and you can fix it. Okay, so I left my foot in too long, so the ball flew off. Um, the, the touch went, didn't go the right way that I wanted it to because my foot wasn't shaped the right way. Simple thing. So you fix it immediately, the three-second rule. And then we use something called give me the ball, which as soon as you've made the mistake, you fixed it, you're then going to just try and get the ball as quick as you can. Because the longer you're waiting for the ball, if, you've not, if you're not following the process, the, the bigger that anxiety grows, right? And like I said the other day, um, you know, the other thing is just remembering that this is just a game that we're meant to play for fun, right? We, we play this game for fun and having mad anxiety and about making mistakes, that's not fun. Right, so number one, micro goals. You write something down that you can focus on in the game. Um, number two, three second rule. Fix your errors in your head, get mad for three seconds and you forget about it. Number three, give me the ball. Okay, now there is one more thing because we do know that uh, what if your coach pulls you out before you can fix it? then you fix it yourself on the bench. Don't give coaches any power to, to have control over your mentality or your anxiety, right? As soon as you're handing the power off to someone else, you've lost. You have to, to keep hold of that power, right? Yes, yeah, the Mamba mentality, right? Now, we all, do, we all know that sometimes like, multiple things like a domino effect will happen right and three or four things in a row will go wrong and you're just down right you're just like don't want to be it i don't want the ball and what we do there is a little technical framing now if you guys remember those old polaroid cameras right with it had the white frame around it and that's where we get it from so my my indoor friends used to make fun of me because if if I'd had a bunch of mistakes, I would literally, I would stop because I'd, I'd recognize the fact that I was blowing my own mind up and I would do this and I would do that. Like I'd hold the Polaroid picture out in front of me that I'd just taken on myself and I would realize that that isn't me. This person right here isn't me. And I would jump through the frame and be like, right, now I'm back. Right, and it sounds absolutely ridiculous. And my teammates used to make fun of me for it, but it works for me. So that's what we call the, um, the framing technique. Um, someone said, what if your coach screams at you a lot? Now, again, what you have to understand with coaches is that a lot of the times as coaches, we don't realize the power of our own words. And it's usually coming from a good place, right? Um, when they're screaming. But again, we'll reverse, we'll rewind back to, to <coughs> excuse me, we rewind back to giving control, 
okay? And it's up to you as a player to recognize things. So, you know, one thing that always used to make me laugh is if a you know, you say you, you're a forward and you miss an easy shot and a coach is screaming at you, you've got a, I don't know if you guys remember the cartoon Charlie Brown and the teacher goes, rrr, 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 and you can't understand what she's saying. And it's the same with this, right? Because if you use those techniques, three second rule, give me the ball, framing, right? You're fixing it yourself. You don't need to listen to them because you know why, why it went wrong and you fixed it, right? So someone screaming and shouting at you, which always made me laugh, right? Because it's like, if you did, if, if you did that on target, it would have gone in. Well, yeah, clearly, I know that. Didn't do it on purpose. Stop passing to the other team. Well, again, not doing it on purpose, right? So again, you've got to be very aware of who you give power to, right? And again, it, it's not the, it's, it's not, a, the coaches aren't doing it to get you down it's through their frustration right and sometimes they that comes out in a negative way but really they meant it in a positive way so it's up to you to take control of your mind um so guys that is that is today's session um so tomorrow i want you to um player analysis the other muris okay so Samantha Muis has a sister called Christy Muis, who's also played for the national team. Christy plays for the Houston Dash in the NWSL. So I want you to analyze Christy Muis. Um, and also um, keep your eye out on our Instagram tomorrow because we're going to put a new challenge on the wall a new footwork challenge. Um, if you've already done Christy, you can pick any other player you want from her team, okay? Um, so, and then, you know, you can, whoever on the Houston Dash. Um, so that is, that is it for today. Um, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't get uh, more people on today. But obviously, we have Mana jump on as a, as a surprise to me as well. And Mana, I, I feel like Mana's just busted out one of the most powerful stories you'll ever hear. Honestly, like, to go from, you know, not even being drafted to not only making the best team in the league, but partnering one of the best forwards in the world on that team in the span of a couple of months is massive, right? So if I'm you, I'm going to rewatch that interview with Mana. Um, she's an absolute rock star of a human being as well. So guys, I'm pumped to be seeing you again tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'm going to try to get Christy on and um, Muris, and we'll see what she thinks about your... Um, technical breakdowns so i will talk to you tomorrow team bms you're awesome thank you for everyone who said this looks like a highlighter it's team swoosh um this is going to be part of the giveaway um it's all good it's possibly the coolest stuff we've ever had guys you're awesome thank you very much